bombshell in the tennis world, ladies and gentlemen. Patrick Muhatugulu comes clean, ladies and gentlemen, with Simona Halep and the controversy. If you are not familiar what's going on, Simona Halep received a four-year ban. That's right. The Anti-Doping Association has handed down a stiff and very harsh penalty for Simona Halep. Yes, with dirty blood work. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Roxadustat was found in her system. Now, what is Roxadustat? Well, listen, guys. It's, it's a type of anti-anemia medication. What does it do? Well, it helps improve blood flow and oxygen flow. Now, how will that help or benefit a professional athlete or any athlete, rather? Well, it's going to help them recover quickly while in the process of competing. So, yes, it is something that's very, very beneficial to anyone that's taking it. It's going to give you energy. It's going to give you blood flow. It's going to improve your performance lungs are everything when you're able especially with tennis one of the fastest sports there is in terms of having the need to recover and explode and be quick and react when your blood flow and your oxygen flow is improved and increased it's a huge benefit now listen guys if you're not familiar last year following her u.s open loss to daria Snyder. Simona was tested following that match and her blood work contained illegal substances, in particular Roxadusat. Now listen guys, Simona Halep's camp has insisted, look, these test levels were very, very low. But furthermore, the Anti-Doping Association gave her a second charge, that's right, for her irregular biological passport levels. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that her blood work contained too many irregularities. And simple, guys, these athletes are tested countless times. Simona Halep said it herself. She passed hundreds of drug tests. So why the second charge? Well, this is why the second charge. Looking at her previous test samples, they noticed the irregular patterns. So they can see the spike in the banned substances. In this case, just got a little bit more messy because Patrick is now admitting to guilt. Whoa! Now we're going to spin the block in a minute, but we're going to take a look at Patrick and his involvement in this, I don't know, scandal, if you will, mistake, whatever, allegedly. Now listen, the views in this video are my personal opinion, my personal interpretation of the situation. However, Patrick has facts to shed in this matter from his perspective. Now, if you're not familiar with the relationship with Patrick and Simona, Simona Halep showed up to Patrick's facility in France and begged him to coach her. Patrick stated, look, I'm not interested in, in coaching anyone on the WTA tour full time right now, uh, but it's something, look, maybe in the future. But Simona Halep was relentless. She begged and insisted and pleaded allegedly for Patrick to coach her and he agreed. Now, fast forward guys, following her very impressive season and that early exit loss at the US Open. Let's touch upon that really quick. Now, I cover matches, I follow tennis, and something was in the air, ladies and gentlemen. Simona Halep was nearly, what, she was had to be higher than a 5,000 to one favorite to defeat Daria, and that did not seem sense. It's like you could smell something was up in the air, and you can see these things when they happen. It's like you can just feel it, right? Simona Halep would end up losing that match. That was an insane type of match. It was back and forth. At one point, she had Daria, and it felt like she should have won the match. It went three sets. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Simona lost the first set 6-2. She won the second set bagel fashion, and then she lost the match, the third and final set 6-4. But in terms of Simona Halep's year in 2022, she won two championships. She won the Melbourne Somerset and she won Toronto, a WTA Masters. She didn't have any 
championships in 2021, the subpar season full of injuries. We know about the back injury, 25 and 10 in 21. She, she wasn't that active in 2020 as well, 23 and 3, but she did win several championships. She won Rome, she won the Live Sport Prague Open, and she won Dubai. In 2019, of course, that was the year she won Wimbledon right big big championship where she took out serena williams do we want to touch upon that uh okay maybe later but let's still let's focus on 2022 that year was a very impressive year she started things off winning the melbourne somerset she took out alvalva gabriella elena russe she took out victoria golobic kunwin jong and kuna matova in the championship match the australian open she made the round of 16 she beat magdalena Frack. Beecher said dad, Danka Kovinic. She lost to Elisa Cornet, which was unexpected, right? And Elisa, congratulations, because she made history after nearly 16, 17, 18 years on tour. That was her first time ever making it to a quarterfinal in a Grand Slam. Dubai, she made the semifinal match. She beat Alison Riss, Rousse again, Anjibor, and she would lose to Ostapenko at Dubai. The Indian Wells, she made the semi. Ending well, she beat Alexandrova in the second round after having a bye. Coco Goff in the third. Serana Kirstea, fellow countrywoman in the round of 16. Petra Martic in the quarterfinal, and she lost to Iga. First set went to a tie break in the semifinal. Madrid, she made the quarterfinal. She took out Zong, Bedosa, Coco Goff again, and Anshabor beat her in the quarterfinal. Not much to say about Rome. She lost to Danny Mel in the second round. The French Open, Ken Wenjong beat her in the second round. But Birmingham on grass, guys. She beat Serenko in the first. Harriet Dart, Katie Bolter, Beatrice Haddad beat her in three in Birmingham. She would get revenge upon Beatrice later in the season. Bad Humberg, she made it to the semifinal where, look, she was a walkover against Bianca. But she beat Senyakova, Tamara Zedensek, and Amanda Anisimova. Wimbledon, semifinal. Mukova, Flipkins, Magdalena Frack. Paula Badosa, Amanda Anisimova, Rebecca, and I covered that match. Told you Rebecca will win that as the underdog. Washington, round of 16. Anna Kalinskaya took her out. She beat Buska in the first. Toronto, her big championship with Patrick. A master event. Donna Vekic, Zong, Jill Teichman, Coco Golf again, Pegula, and Beatrice Haddad. Three sets in the final for her WTA Masters Championship. Now, a lot of people feel that the suspected drug use it's something that's gone on for a long time. I mean, let's take a look at players like Coco Golf. A lot of people feel she was robbed in this situation. Now, this is allegedly, we don't know what's really going on in Simona Halep's camp. We don't know if this is truly a mistake, but the truth normally will always come out. In case you're not familiar, Simona Halep has beat Coco Golf four times. Actually, all four times they played. The first coming in 2019 at Wimbledon where Coco had that historic run, only 15 years old. She made it to the fourth round of Wimbledon, the round of 16. I thought Coco could have won that slam at a 15 year old, but she ran into Simona Halep. Simona Halep beat her in straight sets, 6-3, 6-3. Fast forward three years later at the Indian Wells, Simona Halep again, the round of 32, ruined Coco's bid for a master championship, 6-3, 6-4. She beat her in straight sets. How about Madrid the same year? Again, another thousand master 1000 event 6464 toronto that same year guys quarterfinals coco the 10th seed possibly ruin another master championship 64 the second set went to a tie break but listen guys again i say allegedly in this video because we don't actually know what's happened all we know is what's being reported to us in the public and some people even say this is probably went back to that same year in 2019 where we were probably robbed of seeing Coco and Serena Williams in the Grand Slam final. Simona Halep beat Serena Williams that year at Wimbledon, ruining the bid for history. Serena Williams, that's right. But listen, guys, Simona Halep, she has maintained her innocence all along and but listen, we have to give Simona Halep the benefit of the doubt. She maintains her innocence. She said she feels betrayed. And look, she said she's never taken a banned substance in her life, in her career. So these allegations, it's all alleged. Let's just say allegedly. And the reality here is we don't really know what happened. My personal opinion, this is my perspective. I feel 
I don't think there's any way a banned substance gets into your system without everyone inside the camp being involved. You know, at least the coach and the athlete. And Patrick has come out recently and said this failed test on the behalf of Simona Halep is his fault. He said he gave her a supplement, some uh, some collagen, which for the most part helps. It's I mean, collagen is, is the big protein builder inside the body you know it's responsible for building and and creating most of the protein that we have in our systems uh patrick states that he gave simona halep some type of uh supplement that contained collagen to help you know help increase her strength and roxaducat was tainted within that substance now listen i am not a scientist i'm not a chemist I'm, i'm not a doctor so i can't tell you if that's something that's even possible i mean from the research that i can see it's it's a very slim chance that that's even possible to be honest with you but nonetheless patrick claims that now if they can prove that this direct line of supplements have been tainted if they've been mass produced to other athletes then look simona has got a case and i've stated that i don't think Simona's is going to do the four years anyway i think she'll do two uh normally if someone in the camp or the athlete admits guilt then they'll reduce it we saw this happen with beatrice dad and listen guys the fact that patrick is admitting guilt question for you all does this let simona halep off the hook was she not familiar with what was going on was she not in the know of possibly she could be taking a banned substance what do you think my personal opinion look if i was a star athlete on this type of level i would have my coach working on my tennis game and i would have a separate physical trainer working on my fitness my strength etc and a lot of the top stars you see this they have a tennis coach that works on their tennis game and then they have a physical trainer an athletic trainer that works on their fitness However, we've seen in a lot of these camps as well, the coach does help with the physical fitness as well. I mean, being a tennis coach, you, you have to. I think it's impossible. But what do you guys think? Should should coaches be even involved in giving their players supplements? I mean, this is a slippery slope here, right? It, it really is. I mean, Patrick, I mean, I, I guess he has the respect maybe not now after this, but I mean, I think he still has the respect because, the, look, Let's give everyone the benefit of the doubt. It's possible, like I said, if they can trace, up, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, if, if they can trace a large sample of these collagen products that have been tainted by accident, then we got to let Simona Halep off the hook and Patrick as well and get her back to playing tennis immediately, right? However, though, if we can't prove, if, if, if it cannot be proved that these supplements were tainted, then look if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck is not a mongoose people and it's going to be tough to to disprove these facts with the anti-doping agency because the reality here is listen guys her biological passport shows several irregularities that's an issue that is an issue ladies and gentlemen over a period of time so was simona taking was patrick giving simona this one collagen substance for a long period of time there's so many answers that need to be explained and discussed right but the anti-doping agency they do not want to hear it they don't this is a very stiff penalty and it's going to be hard to to pull a fast one over these scientists it really is now look i stated earlier in the video there's so many agencies in europe and i mean this is known it's it's kind of, it's kind of like the dark web if you are a professional athlete and you want to cheat the system go to europe they have all types of supplements that cannot show up on a test report there's a lot of athletes that are doing illegal substances they're taking them and they're not getting caught because these testing systems cannot detect them but nonetheless guys let's give Simona Halep the benefit of the doubt okay we're going to assume that Patrick is at fault here and Patrick's at fault and not Simona well listen guys personally this is what I think happened I think Simona Halep 
said enough is enough patrick either you need to come clean or i'm gonna come clean this this is what i think how does this happen one year plus after the test sample after the failed drug test over a year later now patrick finally comes out i think simona said look enough is enough they're not budging on the suspension so listen you need to come clean or i'm gonna come clean that's what i think happened that's my personal opinion okay i only speak for myself and again allegedly because you know there's we can't prove that but that's what i think happened what do you guys think happened and again i expect to see simona Halep back around this time next year playing tennis professionally that's just my personal opinion i do expect the anti-doping agency after patrick coming clean to reduce this sentence what do you guys think comment below is simona Halep a cheater we'll give her the benefit of the doubt We'll see you soon. Tennis in a minute. Stay tuned for the Cancun final tonight. Pigula, Iga, who you got?